Hi and welcome to Rapid Tabletop. My name is Leonard Dime. You can call me Leo. This will be my first video as a Rapid Tabletop. I've done a couple before, but this will be the first one I'm actually doing as a tutorial and with myself included. So in this video we will uh, go through quite hastily and quite uh, rapidly uh, one of the tiles I made here for John Blanche. I know it's really fast and not really detailed, but don't worry, we'll, I will actually go into more details in future videos. So in this video I will go through all the way from, from a kit, all the way to a finished product as we can see here in front of us. And uh, future videos is actually going to be my patrons who's going to be deciding what movies or video clips I'm going to do next. So if you want to be a part of that, please uh, join my Patreon and you can find the link down below. But enough about that, let's get started. Right, so let's get started here. So here you can see me selecting a tile from the 2D tiles from the original game 2017 here. Selected a collapsed wall section here because that's one of the requests from the client here. So the first thing I do actually is drawing up a schematic here, just a rough run. I'm not, I'm not a great painter or draw, drawing schematics, but let's get a rough idea of what to get. And also this helps with uh, selecting how many kits you need and uh, what parts to invest in. Here I'm just looking through some uh, bits box for some potential parts and uh, what we can use for, few, for the build. So when I go through the kits that I need, I always cut out every single thing, all the walls, all the details, I clean the sprue completely. And then begins this uh, process here of cleaning all the mold lines, all the little things that you don't want here, the flushes. This will take some time, so sit down, relax, put on a movie or something in the background. I'm watching Vikings here while I'm uh, doing the basic work of it all. So after cleaning, I'm actually doing the walls and columns here, or actually all the parts that needs to be glued. So, But in general, I'll start with the columns and walls, because they actually need some dry fitting after you have assembled all the pieces together here. Uh, they're quite sensitive, so what I do, I assemble the columns and walls, and after that I will use one of the Necromunda tiles, and I will dry fit them onto the floor tile here. You'll see this in a moment here, while I'm, uh, when I'm dry fitting it all. Also make sure that you uh, try to get straight angles, of course, you can see I have a cutting board here with some angles, so if you're new to it, try to use it to get the uh, 90 degree angles with the walls. And here you can see me dry fitting everything, just checking so all the walls and columns are actually in the correct space. Alright, and here I'm actually cutting up one of the columns and uh, later on the walls uh, to make the collapse ball uh, section here. Nothing really fancy, just cutting it down with a normal cutter. You can use a Games Workshop one, works totally fine. And here you can see, just cutting it down and don't throw away any of the pieces that you cut away because you're going to use them in a later stage, which is going to be shown here in a few seconds. Alright, so with all the pieces that you cut off, you can actually start reassembling some of them here in a random pattern to get some collapsed uh, wall effects. I'm just using the normal plastic glue here. And it is a little bit of a weak bond, of course. I just bond it tightly more with some uh, structure paint for Vallejo. Alright, so now we move on to just assembling all the, the walls and columns, because now we have done all the basic work. Everything is fitting together nicely. So this is what I call a basic step, or the basic shape step of my process. Once that's done, I go over to the main theme of the tile, which is the workshop. And then finally, the details. And also dry fitting here, it's uh, really good to check if everything is fit together very nicely before you glue it down. So I can see here it didn't really fit, so I actually had to cut off a small piece from the floor tile. And there we go, fits nicely. Here I just put even more of this structure paint from Vallejo. 
I use this all around the objects for a reason, which I'll uh, discuss later on when I'm painting the whole piece here. But just random patterns, but focusing on the uh, objects. Here I had some problems with my airbrush. It's uh, actually forgot to clean it properly before I actually started recording here. So you can see it's not really covering properly. But this is a very important step when you are uh, base coating the, the terrain piece. Make sure you really get into all the corners, turn it upside down, because this is like the basic thing of it all. If you miss a spot later on in the later stages, if it's, there's black in it, it's just gonna be like a shadow or something like that. And try to use gloves. Uh, I didn't use it here because they have all run out now during the COVID. All right, here I made my second mistake here. With the uncleaned airbrush, I didn't add any airflow improver into the mix here. So it's a little bit spotty at times, irregular flow patterns and so on, but no biggie, it's just a terrain piece, and uh, if you get some irregular patterns, it doesn't really matter that much. Second step here, after I made the first pass-through, uh, go into the each individual tile and uh, do a basic highlight uh, inside the tile. And here we go, we'll go over to the actual wall sections here. Always try to spray it from an angle, from above, so you'll get those natural shades. And this here you can also see why it's important. If you really get a nice coat with the undercoat, you're going to get some natural shades into it. Here we go over to the metallics, that's the next step of my painting process here because it's one of the uh, dominating colors uh, on my tiles. And also it doesn't really matter if I do mistakes in the later stages where I paint over the metallics by mistake, it doesn't really matter, it just adds up to the weathering effect. As you can see, I have this uh, turning plate, which I'm using when I'm painting. It's really good for terrain pieces to have something to turn the terrain pieces around uh, because they're quite big and lumpy. So if you can get one of those, it's really good. You can see me using it here. It's really easy to, to move around, work very quickly. Moving on to the next step here, time for the panels. Using our whole red here from Vallejo to uh, fill in all the panels we are with brown. Also I'm picking out all the areas that's going to be red and green. And of course the, the collapse wall, getting some random patterns of brown here also.
Alright, final pieces here now. So, contrast medium and a contrast color of your choosing here. I chose one of the blue ones, Leviathan Blue I think it is, and uh, it's very heavily diluted with a contrast medium here. Continue over to the small piece too. Right, back to the whole red, painting uh, the, some objects here with a brown color, just as a basic uh, foundation color. And just picking up some random objects to be painted in a different color. And so I go through all the pieces here, by finding all the objects. Alright, so on to the next step here now. Some kind of off-white or bleached bone color here goes onto the panels. And as I mentioned before, uh, future videos is going to be uh, decided uh, pretty much by my patrons on what I'm going to do. Uh, future videos, they're going to be deciding what path I'm going to take when I do my next videos here. If you want to be a part of that or just support the channel or support the work I'm doing here, just head over to my Patreon page at uh, patreon.com and look up Rapid Tabletop. Here we go, almost done. Moving on to the reds, just uh, picking out the red areas. Usually I have this for the barricades, uh, some barrels and stuff like that. Which is not shown in this uh, video today here is that I actually uh, use a second highlight for the red. Uh, but mistakes were made and uh, I didn't record that part actually. I'm sorry about that. Moving on to the greens. Usually of course the crates, ammo crates. And other random objects you might find interesting to paint in green. Same thing here, forgot to uh, record all the highlights from this stage. You can barely see it here in this clip here, but it's actually a different color here. Orange, yellow color here, I'm painting the main part of that object there. Alright, so contrast paint again. I love to use this on metallics because you can get some different effects from it. Here I'm getting a bronze effect. So I'm just picking out different objects here at random where I think it would be nice to have some bronze effects. This is one of the things I do to increase the speed of my painting. I paint everything with uh, chrome or metal. 
Then I just pick out uh, all the objects that are going to be in different metallic colors, either dark metallic or bronze, gold, whatever it is, and I will just use different kinds of uh, contrast paint to uh, get those effects. And a good thing here with using contrast paint for this is actually that you get the, the shades directly into it. Alright, so yes, splashing water all over the tile here now. Then using the classical one, Agrax Earthshade. Just putting random patterns here and the water actually dilutes it a little bit and spreads it out. Giving a nice weathered effect. Now moving on to uh, painting with Agrax Earthshade on uh, all the objects. Here I'm picking out all the lights, painting it with contrast paint again to give it a small shiny effect. Again, Agrax Earthshade. Now uh, yet again, here's another uh, contrast medium mix with another color from the contrast range. Using it on the, all the panels here just to give it a slight shade and a different hue to it all. Moving on to the final steps here now, painting all the dirt that's all around all the objects and the random patterns I made before with the structure paint. And this is the reason here now I'm putting it around objects. If I made any mistakes around these objects, I can cover it up now with the dirt color. And here I'm just dry brushing, but I made some mistakes, so I didn't record all of it. And also it's just a normal dry brush with bleached boned color. Here it's done, assembling all the parts now, and here you have the finished product. Alright, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know it went went by a little bit fast here, and uh, as I said before, I'm gonna make uh, separate videos in the future, where it's uh, focusing on each individual part of the video. And uh, so it's gonna be like planning, building, and then finally it's gonna be the painting stages general advices of course and then as I've mentioned like two times already patrons will be the ones deciding what projects I will be doing what kind of videos I'm going to make so if you want to be a part of that just please join me at patreon.com and just look for me there at the rapid tabletop so thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video